Okay, hey everyone, so let's uh, move on to handout 6D. Before we do that, I want to mention this right here, um, which comes in our PowerPoint right before handout 6D, but it talks about blood and nerve supply. I just wanted to um, emphasize that bone has a lot of blood supply. So all of these little foramen that you would see in a real bone. This is like, uh, I don't know, it looks like the top, the head of a tibia. But if you look at this, it's just loaded with blood vessels. And that's because we make blood in spongy bone. So the epiphysis of this tibia is going to have a lot of bone marrow making the uh, bone cells, or I'm sorry, the uh, blood cells. And we're going to need a lot of blood vessels to feed bone. This is one of the reasons why bone repairs itself pretty darn well. It's because it has lots of blood supply. So we've got um, periosteal arteries that run along the periosteum on the outer edge. We have nutrient arteries that go through the um, medullary cavity and deep within the bones. We have uh, metaphyseal and epiphyseal arteries that are going to feed the epiphysis and the middle portion called the um, uh, metaphyseal area. All of these bones are going to be loaded with blood vessels. Now, I am not going to ask you questions about the different types of uh, arteries that are coming in. I just want you to realize that bones have a lot of blood supply and that is going to feed those bones and that helps with bone repair and it also um, helps us disperse all of these blood cells that are going to be made within the spongy bone okay so um, that is just one slide of your powerpoint now Handout 6D is going to talk about bone development, how bones develop in the fetus, all right? So there are two ways that bones are made in a fetus or an embryo. And uh, the first one is called intramembranous ossification, which we'll talk about first. And then the second one is called endochondrial ossification. And this is the one that we're going to spend most of our time on. So let's look at this handout a little more closely. Handout 6D. If I zoom in here, we're going to talk about this type of bone development called intramembranous ossification first. Now I have it written here that it says intramembranous ossification forms the flat bones of our skull and mandible. The good news is only the flat bones of our skull and our mandible, our jawbone, they're the only bones that are made through this process of intramembranous ossification. What happens is we build the bones directly from a connective tissue uh, layer called the mesenchyme. So this mesenchyme is going to lay down a layer early in an embryo's development. And this mesenchyme is going to give rise to these bones of our skull. So the frontal bone, the parietal bone, occipital bone, temporal bone, and then the mandible are all going to be made through intramembranous ossification. What do you really need to know about this is that the bones are made directly from essentially connective tissue stem cells, this mesenchyme layer. So what we do is we lay down this layer in the embryo and then that layer is going to be transferred into bone. So if you can just imagine the embryo is laying down layers of tissue and one of these layers is called the mesenchyme and this mesenchyme layer is going to, uh, it's already connective tissue. It's going to uh, be transformed 
by shipping things like calcium carbonate into it, it's going to be transformed into bone. All right? And that's really the big picture of intramembranous ossification. What we're really interested in is this process called endochondrial ossification. And that's because endochondrial ossification produces almost all the bones of the body, except for those few uh, cranial bones and the mandible that are made through intramembranous ossification. All the other bones are made through endochondrial ossification. So I wrote here that it's the bone is built from a cartilage model. So to make a bone through endochondrial ossification, what we're going to do is we're going to make a cartilage model of the bone, all right? And then we're going to infuse that cartilage with minerals that are going to replace the cartilage into bone. So we turn the cartilage into bone. That is endochondrial ossification. So if you look at this, I just say it revolves a replacement of cartilage by bone and forms most of the bones of the body. The first step is creating a cartilage model. And then this cartilage model is going to be um, transformed into the bone. Now, if you're in my lab class, I talked about ribs and we talked about this word chondral. And I said chondral, like the uh, vertebrochondral ribs. Chondral means cartilage. So endo means within, chondral, cartilage. Ossification means bone making. So we're going to be making the bone within a cartilage model. And that's what endochondrial ossification means. Now, to understand this, because it's a fairly complex process, we're going to be looking at handout 6E. Now, with our class, we're going to be doing this in person. So when we come back from our test, we're going to be going into handout 6E, and I'm going to be starting with handout 6E. All right, so hopefully you're watching these videos before you come to class so that you're all caught up. And we're going to hit the ground running in person with handout 6E, talking about the specifics of this endochondrial ossification. So stay tuned. There's more to come on this chapter. All right. See you later.